الحمد لله العزيز الغفار الكبير المتعال سميع الدعاء ومجيب الدعوات الذي يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه ويدعى خوفا وطمعا أحمده سبحانه وأشكره على نعمه كلها ما علمنا منها وما لم نعلم وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له دعوة الحق والذين يدعون من دونه لا يستجيبون لهم بشيء إلا كباسط كفيه إلى الماء ليبلغ فاه وما هو ببالغه وما دعاء الكافرين إلا في ظلال وأشهد أن نبينا وسيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله الرسول المصطفى والنبي المجتبى صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه وذريته والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم التناد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله وكونوا مع الصادقين أما بعد Today is the glorious day of Jumu'ah, a day of celebration. It is a day in which Allah completed His creation and set things in motion. Moreover, it is the day chosen by Allah for the dedication of His devotion. It is a day that we're gathered here for his glorification. However, there are other people that are commemorating a crucifixion. The day of Jumu'ah is truly indeed a special day. And you may not realize this, but in the week in Arabiya, if you look at the names of the days, you will realize that Jumu'ah is the sixth day. The week is Al-Ahad, Al-Ithnayn, Al-Thulatha, Al-Arbi'a, Al-Khamis, Al-Jumu'ah. It's the sixth day and the last day is a Sabbat. Although the work week, we start with Monday. So you can imagine that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the heavens and earth. الَّذِي خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا فِي سِتَّةِ أَيَّامِ ثُمَّ اسْتَوَى عَلَى الْعَرْشِ The great day of Jumu'ah. So many things in Islam revolve around this day. And we have many narrations that tell us that it is a day that Allah created Adam and made him enter the Jannah. And then, however, it's the day he exited. And that the Sa'a will begin on the day of Jumu'ah in some future time. Everything about Jumu'ah is special. And still, there are some people that are commemorating a death. This week, for us, is a regular week as Muslim. But this week is the biggest week for Christendom. If you think that Christmas is important to Christianity, it is not so important. The reason why it looks important is because people buy gifts today. It's been commercialized. The biggest Christian celebration is Easter, which forms the crux of their creed and aqidah. What's so special about this week, you say? Because on Thursday, Monday, Thursday, is supposedly the last supper of Isa ibn Maryam, a celebration of the Passover. And then on Friday, it is supposedly the day Isa ibn Maryam salam, was crucified. And then on Saturday, according to their mythology, Isa went to hell. And then on Sunday, he resurrected and ascended to him. The resurrection of Isa 
it is the central doctrine of Christianity, without which there is no Christianity as you know it today. But I want us to reflect upon something. Number one, the Rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two, the power of dua. And number three, our closeness to Isa ibn Maryam alayhi salam. Brothers and sisters, I truly believe Muslims do not express enough to non-Muslims, especially Judeo-Christians, how close we are to Isa ibn Maryam alayhi salam. So let's just reflect on this three, inshallah, the rahmah of Allah. When Allah created Isa, like he created all of us, he created Isa special, but not as special as Adam alayhi salam. Adam is this most special human being because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created him from scratch, dust, and Allah told Iblis, why don't you make such that to lima khalaq to I created him with, I created Adam with my own hands, Allah says. That's the first of us. But when Allah created Isa, Isa had a biological mother already, but it's still a medical challenge. For the times, 2,000 plus years ago, until today, we are now understanding the importance of maternal DNA. Sometimes we will never know who your father is for many, many reasons. He died before you were born. The mother doesn't know who the father is. We will always know who your mother is because of mitochondrial DNA. Allahu Akbar. It is passed on from the mother to the child. We will always know who your mother is. So Isa was called Isa ibn Maryam. But he was created that special way to the point where Allah says, وَجَعَلْنَاهَا وَبْنَهَا آيَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ It's an ayah to the entire humanity. It's a miracle. It's something to reflect upon, especially we live in the era of medical technology. The story of Isa should intrigue us all. So Allah says the creation of Isa was a rahmah for us to reflect upon. However, brothers and sisters, others regard Isa as the son of Allah because he has no father. So Allah answered that question in Surah Ali Imran. When a group of Christians came to visit the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the reason why Allah revealed Surah Ali Imran, a good portion of the beginning of it, and only in Ali Imran, Allah tells us the beginning of Maryam Alayhi Salam. Inna Allah astafa Adam wa Nuha wa ala Ibrahim wa ala Imran ala al-Alameen. Surah number three, starting with ayah number 33. And in that Allah says, Inna mathala Isa inda Allahi it's like the example of Adam. Allah says, this is the truth. Isa, I created him similar to the way I created Adam. So that is a rahmah from Allah, the creation of Isa. However, brothers and sisters, those that believe that Isa is the son of Allah, their only claim to that is to say that the Holy Spirit came upon Maria. When Allah creates anything, anything Allah wants to come to life, Allah puts a ruh in it. That's it. And that's why Allah explains in other parts of the Quran about Maryam alayha salam. فَنَفَخْنَا فِيهَا مِنْ رُوحِنَا the malak just comes and blows the ruh, and there comes a life. Allah asks Musa, وَمَا تِلْكَ بِيَمِينِكَ يَا مُوسَى قَالَ هِيَ عَصَاي It's my stick. And Allah transforms it to a living serpent. My ruh. It's that simple for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in life. Allah creates life whichever way He wants. And He created Isa the way He did to challenge humanity, my dear respected brothers and sisters. However, as you already know, Isa came and he gave da'wah. The people, some of them believed, and many of them did not believe from Bani Israel. 
But those who disbelieve, they plotted for his demise. وَيَمْكُرُونَ وَيَمْكُرُ اللَّهُ وَاللَّهُ خَيُّرُ الْمَعْتِرِينَ They wanted to get rid of the ayah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And here comes the power of dua. It says in the Bible, in the book of Matthew, and you'll find similar stories in the book of Mark and Luke that talk about the entire incident of Isa's arrest, trial, conviction, and crucifixion. In specifically the book of Matthew, it says that as this Passover time came and he had his dinner with his companions, he said to them, my soul feels sorrowful that I will be betrayed to be killed. According to the Bible, Allahu A'lam if that even happened. But let's go with the Bible. It says that Isa knew there's a plot to kill him. And he told his Hawariyin, one of you will betray me. Imagine you sit with the closest people to you and you now know one of them will betray you to be killed. How do you even eat that meal? Subhanallah. So Isa chose two of them to go with him to pray to Allah. He told them, wait here, I will go over there to pray. The Bible says Isa ibn Maryam went ahead and he made sajda and put his face on the floor and he asked Allah, if it is possible for this death to escape me, and I'm paraphrasing, your will be done. But if it happens that it can never be escaped, I accept it. The Bible says Isa made a dua so solemn, you've never heard a prophet make dua like this. The Bible says Isa's dua was never answered. When he woke, when he came up from prayer, they were waiting to arrest him now. He woke up his companions who were sleeping. He told them, wait for me here, watch me. They fell asleep. He told them, wake up, the time is now. They're here to arrest him. This is what the Bible teaches. My question to my Christian counterparts, what happened to the dua of Asa? It's as if it went unanswered. He was arrested, he was tried, he was falsely convicted according to the Bible and then executed ignominiously by crucifixion. But the Quran tells us something different in Surah Al Imran. And Allah said, وَيَمْكُرُونَ وَيَمْكُرُ اللَّهُ وَاللَّهُ خَيْرُ الْمَاكِرِينَ Then Allah says, إِذْ قَالَ اللَّهُ يَا عِيسَىٰ إِنِّي مُتَوَفِّيكَ وَرَافِعُكَ إِلَيْهِ وَمُطَهِّرُكَ مِنَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَجَاعِلُ الَّذِينَ تَبَعُوكَ فُقَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا إِلَىٰ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ Allah said to Isa, I will take you and raise you up to me. That they will not get the opportunity to kill you. The power of dua, Allah answered Isa ibn Maryam alayhi salam's dua. Brothers and sisters, dua is your only weapon as a believer. As a believer, we will be persecuted. Millions of Muslims in concentration camps in Xinjiang. The entire world silent, Muslim or non-Muslim country, doesn't matter. Because their oppressors are our merchants. That's the truth of the matter. For economic reasons, that's why we all shut up. How many Muslims were driven from Arakan, Myanmar? Hundreds of thousands, a million now. Where was the security council? Nowhere. What about the Muslims of Iraq? who had nothing to do with 9-11. Millions of them died. Syria. You think all of that is bad? Wallahi, if all the oppressed Muslims put their hands together, raise it up high to Allah and say, Allahumma. Allah said, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمُ دْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبَ لَكُمْ Surah Ghafir, Surah number 40, Ayah number 60. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ عَنْ عِبَادَتِي سَيَدْكُلُونَ جَهَنَّمَ دَاخِرِينَ Allah says, if you scorn my worship, a dua, the Prophet Sallallahu says, in a hadith collected by Imam Ahmad, states, إِنَّ الدُّعَا هُوَ الْعِبَادَةِ Dua is the essence of worship. The salah that we make, any salah, you start with this takbir. The one of the pillars of salah is the recitation of Al-Fatiha, the surah. That surah is also called a dua. Surah Al-Fatiha is a dua. 
without which you have no salah whatsoever. Subhanallah. The power of dua. Do not forget that, brothers and sisters. Allah will respond when you truly need the answer. If you just raise your hand, well, I want an iPhone 12. Well, that's not an important thing. You can get that. You don't even need dua. You can buy one. You can steal one. You don't need dua. But when you truly need something from Allah, you make dua for it. Your answer will come immediately, or it could even take thousands of years. Like Ibrahim made a dua. رَبَّنَا وَبْعَثْ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِّنْهُمْ يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِكَ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةَ وَيُزَكِّهِمْ Thousands of years, Allah sent Prophet Muhammad Why? Because the answer has to come to the perfect time. He says dua was answered immediately, in case you did not notice that. Sometimes, when the answer is required, Allah will respond immediately. And all the Anbiya are given one nuclear option dua. Nuh he said, Rabbi la tadar ala al abdi min al kafirina dayyara. Allah says, Wasna'il fulk. And then Allah flooded the earth. Musa made a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rabbana tmi sa'ala amwalihim. Washdud ala kulubihim. Fala yu'minu hatta yarawu al adab al alim. Allah said, That's it. Leave Egypt. Fa asri bi ibadi. Subhanallah. So he says, Dua, Quran tells us was answered and he was taken up before the arrest and crucifixion if you have any doubt about that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states surah nisa surah number four ayah number 157 وَقَوْلِهِمْ إِنَّا قَتَلْنَا الْمَسِيحَ عِيسَى بْنَ مَرْيَمْ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ Allah says وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ Allah tells two things did not happen. He was never killed nor crucified. So there is no room for doubt as a Muslim to say, well, maybe they didn't crucify, maybe he died. Allah says وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ وَلَكِنْ شُبِّهَ لَهُمْ It was made to them to, to think that that's what they're doing. Allah can control what you see and hear like he did in Badr. It's easy for Allah. Someone else could have been crucified. Allah Allah says about Isa, وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ يَقِينَ بَرْ رَفَعَهُ اللَّهُ إِلَيْهِ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَزِيزًا حَكِيمًا وَإِمْ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ إِلَّا لَيُؤْمِنَنَّ بِهِ قَبْلَ مَوْتِهِ وَيَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ يَكُونُ عَلَيْهِمْ شَهِيدًا Allah says they didn't kill him. Allah took him up and every Jew or Christian must believe in him before he dies his natural death. Allahu Akbar. So you see the power of dua. Allah will respond. Isa ibn Maryam was saved by dua. According to the Bible, he made a powerful dua for Allah to save him. Quran tells us Allah saved him. My dear respected brothers and sisters, we Muslims hold the keys to understanding Isa ibn Maryam and for us to share this with our Christian counterparts. Because they have a lot of holes in the stories. Biblical historians agree the story of the crucifixion is fiction. It is pu it's purely false. They just made it up to make it look good. Christian scholars know that. The Pope knows that. But the belief in the crucifixion is the central doctrine to their faith. That Jesus is divine, he died, and he resurrected. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran? If you notice in the Bible, there is a belief that Isa will come again to the end of time. But it doesn't seem like Isa said that at all. They believe that the end of time will be within Isa's time frame. The only place where we have a clear sign, clear revelation that Isa will come again is in the Quran of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Surah Al-Zukhruf, Allah states, وَإِنَّهُ لَعِلْمٌ لِسَّاعَةِ فَلَا تَمْتَرُنَّ بِهَا Allahu Akbar. It is Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that prophesied that Isa will come back towards the end of time in a very clear way. Brothers and sisters, Isa is an eye of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's one of the Anbiya and the Mursaleen of Islam, like all the others. And we must protect his name and tell the truth about his story. So we must share. We must learn our own deen. 
Surat Ali Imran. You must learn it so you can understand. Surat Al Zukhruf. For you to understand what happened. Why Allah saved him? Because Allah will not allow his ayah to be destroyed. That's why Allah saved Isa. Now you might argue medically. How come Isa is gone? He's not dead. He's alive. And he will come back. Allah answers that in Quran as well. A man passed by a place. Allah caused the man to die a hundred years and brought him back. What about Ashab al Kahf? For 300 years they slept. This is easy for Allah if He created Isa without a father. Brothers and sisters, the Quran tells us exactly how Isa was conceived and was born, as you can see in Surah Maryam. And a lot of Catholics are drawn to Surah Maryam because it's called Maryam. They love that surah because the Bible has nothing about Maryam. She just shows up in their stories. No beginning. In the Quran, Maryam has a beginning, a true beginning. And the conception of Isa, Allah explains it clearly that it's just Allah's kun faya kun, and that's how it happens. And but that story of Isa teaches us that true power of dua. Use it when you're being oppressed. All the oppressed Muslims of the world today, Ramadan is coming. Let us all make dua for Allah to change our situation. Whether it is the pandemic or the oppression that we receive from others. Lastly, brothers, share our deen with our Christian counterparts, your co-workers. I know it's hard because in the workplace, separation of religion and work, I know that. It's kind of hard. You can always put hints here and there. And you always have those that are close to you, inshallah. I would like to conclude, brothers and sisters, by saying to all of us here that these days are very significant in Christendom, the most significant. So today, they're enacting crucifixions. And on Sunday, there's resurrection. Brothers and sisters, do you doubt the resurrection? Do you think that one day we'll be resurrected? If you have a doubt, in kuntum fi rabi min al Allah answered that question. I like the question that was asked by one of the most beloved messengers to Allah, who asked Allah, Rabbi, arini kayfa tuhil mawta. One of the MBA asked Allah, Oh Allah, my Lord, show me, let me see how you bring the dead to life. He didn't ask Allah to confirm that resurrection will happen. He said, I want to see it myself. Allahu Akbar, this is beautiful. Imagine a Nabi has so much closeness to Allah, he can ask such a thing. Some of the kids here know who that Nabi is. I will reserve the name. Allah asked him, Awalam took me, Qala bala. He says, no, but nay, I already believe. I just want to satisfy my heart. Allah said, okay. Get four birds. Pet them, make them like you. And then you have to kill them. That's kind of hard. Have you ever pet a bird? Make it grow. Tell it to go and come back, and now you have to kill it. And Allah says, cut it into pieces. Put a piece of these birds in different hills. Call them. Call them. The pieces will come together to life, and they'll fly back to you. Allah says, Wa'lam. Don't doubt resurrection. Every human being will be resurrected. Isa's resurrection is not a special thing. We will all die and we will all be resurrected. That's not a miracle. 
The miracle is, Allah says, I saved him from being killed. And I'll bring him back after thousands of years, the same age he left. SubhanAllah, that is a miracle. And we will all see all human beings one day resurrected. We will see every jinn resurrected. We will see every animal. You will see every malak stand in front of you. Every living thing will come together at Yawm Al-Qiyamah to witness the greatness of Allah. So let us believe today and have no doubts about Allah. Whether you're a doctor amongst us or an engineer, Allah said he created Isa without a father, you better believe it. Allah says that he preserved him, you better believe it. And you better believe that there is resurrection. That's the message we should take to everybody. Insha'Allah, inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya ayuha alladheena amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad kama sallayta wa sallamta wa barakta ala Ibrahim. Wa ala ala Ibrahim wa inna ka hamidun majid. Allahumma hadiya fi man hadayt. Wa aafina fi man aafayt. Wa tawallana fi man tawallayt. Wa barik lana fi ma a'atayt. وقنا شر ما قضيت فإنك تقضي بالحق ولا يقضى عليك اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وانصر الإسلام والمسلمين واغفر لجميع موت المسلمين يا عزيز يا كريم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم أهل علينا شهر رمضان بالأمن والإيمان والسلامة والإسلام ونحن في صحة وعافية والسلم والسلامة برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المبسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وأقيموا الصلاة فإن الصلاة تنهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون الله أكبر